So now let's start scheduling this on to processors. And so notice that the ready tasks at the beginning are tasks 2 and 1, right? Task 1, 2, 3, and 4. Tasks 1, 2, uh, 3, and, and 4. And so we'll go ahead and assign tasks 2 and task 1. Uh, so task 2 gets assigned with a time of 3, and task uh, 1 gets assigned with a time of, of 6. And so when we fast forward to time 3, uh, and task 2 gets completed, right? So task 2 is now completed, task 1 is being worked on. Uh, then immediately task 6 becomes ready. And notice that this is great because task 6, we really want to get done as soon as possible because it's holding up these other two. And so we can go ahead and assign task 6 to processor 1, and that's going to take us all the way out to time 13 here. So when task, fast forwarding now to time 6, when task 1 gets completed, then, uh, let's see here, anything become ready? No, not yet, right? Because task 5 and task 7 both depend upon task 6. But task 4 is ready, so we can go ahead and, oh wait, no, task 3 is ready. Okay, so we can go ahead and assign task 3. Sorry, we can go ahead and assign task 3 here. Uh, it's earlier on our priority list, and it has a time of 7, which also takes us out to 13. So when task, let's hear it, so at time 3rd, that should be 13. So at time 13 here, uh, task 6 gets completed and task 3 gets completed. So task 3 and task 6 both get completed, and that means that this task is ready and this task is ready, so 5 and 7 are both ready now. So I guess task 4 is going to have to wait because we're assigning task 5 and task 7. So task 5 has a time of 3, sorry, a time of 5, bringing us out to 18, and task 7 here has a time of 4, uh, bringing us out to 17. So at time uh, 17, then task, uh, 7 is going to get completed. Uh, this is not going to become ready yet, uh, but task 4 is ready, so finally we can start in on task 4, which will take me out to time 21. And now at time 18, task 5 gets completed, and both of these are done, so task 8 and task 9 are now ready. So we can go ahead and assign task 8 here. Task 8 has a time of 3, takes me out to 21. So now at time 21, task 8 gets completed, task 4 gets completed, and what happens? Task 8 becomes ready, um, and because task 8 is done, task 10 uh, also becomes ready. So now we go ahead and assign tasks 10 and 9. So task 10 gets assigned here, and task 10 takes 7 units of time, so that's going to take us out to 28. And task uh, 9 has time 2, so that's going to take us to time 23. And there we go, there's our schedule. And notice that time, that 28 units of time was our critical time, and so this schedule is optimal. There is no way to make this, uh, schedule, there is no way to make this schedule, uh, finish any faster than we did. And that's not always the case with the critical path algorithm, but it very often does create good results, and we can see why right here. Remember before, that task 6 ended up holding up everything. In this case, we got that task 6 done, as soon as possible. In fact, you'll even notice here that this row across the top is exactly our critical path, and so we get those tasks done as soon as possible.